I'm Spin really happy. Where, uh, here and where. And it's by you, Isabella Strickland, and your father, Michael Strickland. Is that right? Yes, that is exactly right. And it is on Amazon, and we're putting together a couple of reveals. So, uh, so please uh, give us kind of an overview. What do we need to know about then and there, uh, here and where? So, uh, she, the main character, the protagonist, is a 12-year-old girl named Orbella. And she has ADHD and dyslexia because it's the normalization of that. If it's more reoccurring, then people understand that it's normal for people to have. And that people shouldn't be called different for it. Because it's not necessarily different. It's just everyone's different. So, just getting used to it. Uh, so, the 12-year-old girl um, who was just getting into high school because... In, uh, Nine, 11, 11, 13. They're senior high and junior high. Um, so there's that, and she's really anxious about that. And then her parents disappear mysteriously, and then she has to go live with her grandparents. And there's this huge family secret about her past and what she has to become. And now I can't really say anything else because that's going to spoil what it's about so I, I would love to but i can't exactly say well now you've hit on the exact reason why i never summarize another person's book because i never know where that line is is what have i said too much when have i spoiled your story so if i let <laughs> you do it then i'm assured that if we did spoil it it wasn't me <laughs> it's perfect no, it's totally fine. And there's a cat named Lolo, and I needed to integrate cats into this because cats are my favorite. Well, I saw that uh, you had um, um, dedicated the book in part to a cat named Miko who pooed like a bird. Is that right? Yeah, he uh, he passed away recently, two weeks ago. Oh, really? Um, I'm he, sorry if you lost. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's okay. He was the best, and he... Uh, inspired the cat and so did my sister because she is a very big cat person so i wanted to put something or a memory of him in the book so i have this for my future and i can remember him always that's good and then um when uh, when did it occur to you that you wanted to write this book uh, how long have you been thinking of the story the story, in to I know I wanted to write a story a very long time ago because I loved storytelling and my parents would read books to me before I would go to sleep. And, and it was probably my favorite part of the day, just about to go to sleep. And I would keep asking them to continue reading because I wanted to know what happened. Um, so that probably inspired what I wanted to do for later in life because it was something that I did want to try. I wanted to write a book. And that was, if I look in the broad spect of it, this is like normal everyday stuff. It was all the way up here. I didn't think it could be possible. And yet it is. I have it. Ah, ha, ha, ha. It's still a shock to me. And I'm so happy. So um, maybe when I was eight or nine, I told my dad that I wanted to do something with him. And I wanted it to take a really long time, and I wanted there to be a big outcome. So, well, we started brainstorming ideas, and then we realized we wanted a book. And uh, through years and years of process of what it's actually going to be, and we started writing five years ago, as I mentioned. And then through development of that, going through people, it was a lot of trial and error, a lot of that. So it took about till last year to finally figure out the whole thing because cutting out a bunch of stuff was a big part of it because this book would have been very very big if we didn't do that so I'm upset about that in that aspect however over time and in the long run it's going to be better so do you remember how long the the longest draft of it was before you cut it down um oh like 500 pages yeah yeah oh it was so long <laughs> and we needed to cut it out how many like is it now? yeah it was like two books 
It was absolutely insane. How long? How many pages is this? Ah, two hundred and fifty-four. Well, we cut down a lot. Wow, because there was many parts of it that I uh, had personal connection to because the character is kind of like me. It's taking an example of me, but also the stuff around me too, like the people I interact with daily, and I take personality things from them, traits. So, um, cutting out was probably the hardest part of this, to be honest. So how did you, I mean, that's that's a huge cut. I know that writers who are listening are, are, are hurting for you. Like, oh my gosh, that's like half your story. <laughs> how how did you determine what needed to, to cut and what you could live with? Or did you save some of it for maybe a later book? Yes, definitely. It was like two books in one equivalently. So we cut out and added that to the next book, which is in process. So um, there's that. And it's not technically gone, most of it, uh, but it's not in this one. It's not in the first one, which is like the ground layer, which is which is totally okay because it's going to eventually be told later. But there was a lot of parts, like I said, I did have personal connection with, but weren't exactly valid to the storyline or weren't going to make a big difference if it wasn't there. What's something you can think of that fits that criteria that you kind of missed but understand had to go? So there was um, one part of it, oh, I can't remember, um, with her bully. And um, it, kind of, it happened to me with the person that bullied me. Um, so that had personal connection to me, but in the long run, um, we came up with a bunch of brainstorming ideas from how she would first meet her where she was in the book to um, what could actually be reality and what would actually make sense mostly later. So what we came up with was just an idea that didn't technically happen, but was the most fitting, like a puzzle piece. So we just drew a puzzle piece and it perfectly fit in with what was happening. So, um, well, lots of questions for you. Was uh, Aura, uh, Zora Bella is the, was the character, right? I want to make sure I'm saying it right. She, was she always 12, even when you were 10, and then now while you're 15, then it's actually being published and you're doing the revision? Or did, did she age up with you, or was it, was it always going to be 12 years old? It was always going to be 12. Um, we're thinking of a movie, but she might be a little bit older for that because it can connect to a bigger audience then if only you knew some talented multi-award winning actress familiar with the role oh my <laughs> God. Wow. scary I, I wonder who <laughs> <laughs> where uh, i mean where where are you in terms of developing developing the story as a film very close i can't exactly say anything there there is another version in script form and oh i won an award for it my dad and i won an award um for best script in fantasy and um sci-fi and then the whole thing itself so it's in production somewhat and i'm happy because now there's another version of it it's not just a book, it's an actual film. He is happy. A huge congrats to both you and, and your dad. So how does this uh, collaboration work? Do you start working on the story, just you, and then your dad looks on what you're doing and saying, hey, I'd really like to be a part of that, or had you always planned from the start we're going to do this together, and then how do you decide who's going to do what? It was always teamwork. Um, uh, it my dad researched a lot of it because I had school. That's a big part of my life. So it would be hard to focus on short periods of time for writing. So my dad would scribe for me because I would get a scribe in school sometimes when it became overwhelming to write because everything would kind of jumble. So um, there's that. He was a very big help for it. And it was always a team effort for this whole thing. 
and then um, I mean, as you're writing, you're writing about a character that's a little bit like you. And then I assume that uh, being your father, he wants to maybe shape the character a little bit more toward, hey, let's make her uh, the daughter that we eventually want you to become. And then you have to pull it back a little bit and say, no, we're going to make her true to herself. Is that part of the dynamic? Or are you guys see an eye to eye? It's, it's never an issue. I don't even know why I brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> we usually see eye to eye on it because it is based off of both of our lives and uh, the characters in there. We take after people that we have met. And like I said, it is a team effort completely because we both have different personalities um, and different writing styles. So I incorporate what I say into what he writes, which makes sense, kind of, I don't know. Uh, and then um, are you, you're, you're planning possibly a sequel or a series? Have, oh, there or, is definitely a series. Yeah. A hundred percent, because there is a cliffhanger in it. I would be really mean to not finish it. <laughs> Just saying. So do you have a plan? Do you know how many books overall that you're going to start with and then maybe expand out? Or There will definitely be three. Definitely be three. That we can expand out on different characters because there's a lot of ground that we need to cover for this. So if there's any demand for a story on the father or like backstory more gotcha so i mean you could be writing this until you're <laughs> until you're 30 or, or beyond <laughs> i could retire at 20 that would be funny <laughs> i think if anybody's on pace to retire at age 20 you might be the person that would be really <laughs> funny 